Uh, how can we pray to Krishna without the idea of getting, getting anything in return? Okay. How do we pray to Krishna without seeking anything in return? See, the primary thing is not that we never pray to Krishna for something. The primary thing is to develop a relationship with Krishna. Just like, say, now when children are very small, now a baby just cries and the mother or the father or the <coughs> father or somebody comes running to whatever take care of them. And now, that's not true. The parents love the child and they take care. But as the child grows, maybe teenager, adult, then it is not that the child, child's relationship with the parents is only to ask for something. If like say in future, in the uh, child goes to uh, university and they stay, they st uh, they're staying, studying there. And the only time they call their parents is to ask for some money. <laughs> now that will make the relations, make the parents will still be happy, at least you are calling. <laughs> but that won't be a very sweet relationship. Now, if some help is needed, the parents are there to help. But the basis of that relationship is not just asking for help. The basis of the relationship is, is a loving connection. Now, within that loving connection, sometimes we don't also ask for help. So when it is said, don't pray to Krishna for anything for yourself, the idea is, don't make it a self-centered relationship. Make it a real relationship where we want to connect with Krishna for Krishna's sake. Not for what Krishna gives us. So, and, so that way, if we pray to Krishna, basically, praying is meant more to connect us with Krishna than to necessarily fulfill our desire. We can have a different vision of praying. That means, say, if we are having some difficulty, maybe some stressful situation in the school, or with our friends, and then there's some friend who just hears us out, and we unburden our heart. Now, they may not be able to offer any solution, because sometimes the situation is so complicated, there are no easy solutions. But just hearing us out, when they hear us out, two things happen. We feel a little lighter and we feel a little closer to that person. So same way, praying to Krishna is for developing the relationship. So if we have there's something burdening our heart, we can surely pray to Krishna. Just pour out your heart. But don't make that prayer conditional to its fulfillment in our terms. That means Krishna, this is what I need and if you don't do this, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. So if you understand that, Krishna also has a plan for us. And if we, if we with our intelligence feel that this is, that this is how things, if they work out, it will be good, then we can pray for that. But don't make your devotion condition, conditional to that. The idea is that we have our intelligence that is finite, and Krishna has his intelligence which is infinite. So we make a prayer to connect with Krishna, at the end of which, we can even say that, this is how I feel if this gets resolved, it will be good. But if you have some other plan, please give me the strength to serve you. So that way we express our desire. But devotion means we can have desires, but we don't have demands. To have desire is just natural because all of us are individuals. And we can express our desire. But don't make it into a demand. So Krishna, you, you are wiser than me. You can see further than me. So if you have some other plan, please give me the strength to continue to serve you. So that way, we can express our heart, at the same time, express our submission. Okay? Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Hare Krishna. If school is a place of mode of passion, how do you stay in mode of goodness in school? If school is a mode of passion, the mode of passion, how do you stay in goodness? Well, I, when I was in school, I never had this question, because I was already in passion. <laughs> been 30, 40 years ago, but it's not necessary that the mode of passion is itself bad. It is being controlled by that mode that is bad. It's just like in the mode of ignorance, we sleep. Now, is sleeping bad? No, sleeping at the wrong time is bad, is it? <laughs> so, at the time of sleeping, we sleep. But at the time, maybe in a class, if you start sleeping, that's bad. You know, for some of us, the bed is a magical place. As soon as we get on the bed, we remember all the things that we did not do throughout the day. <laughs> and sleep just goes away. 
And then, when we are in the chair studying, that's the time when we remember, oh, I have to sleep now, tired. <laughs> <laughs> so, just like, so sleep in its right place is not only desirable, it's essential for our health. So, similar, so that's, because that's the mode of ignorance. It's a mode of passion. When we have to do things, a certain amount of energy, vigor, dynamism are required. But it's when we become controlled by that. That is the problem. So, so if we have to go into schools where there is passion, then we need to have places where there is goodness. So you come for programs like this. And then that reorients you. Come back on track. You go off track, but you'll come back on track. And when a plane, when a plane flies, a few days ago I came from London to North America, a few weeks ago actually. So then when I flew from London to Toronto, uh, one of my friends is a pilot, he told me that a plane, almost 90 to 95 percent of its flight is off course. Tell me, how does it get to the destination? But actually, it's continuous reorientation. It goes off track because of its speed, because of the atmospheric conditions, because of the wind. It goes off track and the pilot brings it back. Then it goes off track, again back. So, it's by repeatedly coming back on track that the plane gets to the, gets to the destination. And the same principle applies to us. The world around us will divert us. And then we come back to a place which will reorient us. It can be our home, our good friends, spiritual programs like this. And keep coming back, keep coming back. And similarly, within the school also, if we choose our association, we may say, oh, everybody is in the in mode of passion, but not everybody is equally in the mode of passion. There are some students who are there just to have fun. There are some who are, who are not just to have fun, who are there to get into trouble and get others into trouble. <laughs> you know, where are, when, when we are hungry, some people, some friends get us, some, some friends take us to lunch. And when we are hungry, some friends take away our lunch. <laughs> so, in school also we need to choose which association. So, if really, really you say it takes, have friends who are a little more, more sober, more serious, they can have fun, but not in a too wild way, then you won't get into the mode of passion. Okay? Thank you. Yes, please.